What's popping, y'all? Welcome back to another video. So we're going to be talking about SZA and her alterations and why I am sad about it. So SZA has reached her final transformation and I am sad about it, y'all. So over the past couple weeks, there has been a resurgence of videos pertaining to SZA's transformation, quote unquote. Ever since she got the BBL earlier this year and publicly confirmed it, saying, girl, I wanted a fat ass, so I got a fat ass. This has nothing to do with Hollywood, right? People have been picking her face apart ever since. So I've been watching this conversation for a while now. Honestly, I've been aware of this since like two years ago when Paris Milan had posted her explanation on Scissors Transformation. And also there was another young lady that I follow. I'm trying to remember her name, but I'm going to post her screenshot to her video. And this conversation has been had previously, but it's been a resurgence. And I, for one, have been pointing this out for years in my personal life. And no one cared until the transformation has been complete, right? Why have I pointed this out? Why does it make me so sad, you ask? Because I was a SZA fan, like a day fucking one fan in 2013 when SZA was very early on in her career. If you became aware of SZA in her control days, this ain't for you, baby. This is not for you. You can log out because this is before your time, right? This is adults talking about adult things, right? So if you were a fan of SZA in around 2012 or 2013, or maybe even earlier, right? I know you're sad too. I just know it, right? I just, we just have this telepathic thing where I just know exactly how you're feeling about this situation because what? We are day one fans. We literally watched this transformation happen from beginning to end, right? We didn't see it in the middle and like, oh, she don't look different. No, there's some people who say they don't see a difference, which is crazy to me. I ain't even know SZA had surgery, you know? I don't know. I don't really see a difference for real, you know? What I mean? But day one fans who fell in love with who SZA was, how she presented herself then, that is the SZA we know and remember, right? So there's a reason why we're sad and I'm about to break it down to y'all. And it has nothing to do with being anti-plastic surgery. So let me explain. So this story starts with fucking Kendrick Lamar. I know it has to start somewhere. So before I knew about SZA, I was a Kendrick Lamar fan. Young teenage black girl from the inner city of DC bopping to some Compton, Kendrick, right? His sound, what he had to say, how he said it through literary devices, man. Kendrick was and still is a beast in the rap game in my eyes today. I had to dig deep into his discography first before I actually indulged into like being a fan, right? I just didn't listen to a song and was like, bet. I wanted to indulge and research these artists when I was younger that I was clinging to. So when I eventually discovered that he was a part of a super rap group called Black Hippie with Ab Soul, Schoolboy Q, and J-Rock, I had to explore these realms. I was impressed as fuck by the music that they created together and individually. Kinda like some force to be reckoned with since I was fucking 11. Like, think about it. Black Hippie formed in 2009. Crazy, right? Long time ago. I was an automatic fan of them. Now, when they organized a whole record label called TDE, I was just like, fuck yes. Like, I'm astonished. I immediately wanted to be signed to them as a teenager. Like, I want to be signed to them one day. Some kids wanted to be signed to Dreamville. Baby, I wanted to be signed to TDE. No question. Then, to put the icing on this soft-ass cake... SZA was revealed to be the first and only female artist on this record label TDE. I was losing my shit, y'all, like straight up, like I had to know more about Shoddy. And so I did. Her aesthetic was even more to like psych myself up about. Like her aesthetic just psyched me out. I couldn't believe what I was seeing before my eyes. Beautiful brown skin gal, hair on big, like big Afro hair. And 4C blown out at that, y'all. Check it. It was a 4C style. It wasn't some type of like loose curl, 3B. No, baby. It was 4C blown out. And I knew that because I had 4C hair. That's what got me was that fluffy 4C hair, y'all. I'm telling y'all, check it. At like 15 years old, I had never seen a woman who looked like her, who also looked kind of like me with my same hair type, rock such a tall looking natural hair hairstyle like that I thought that was reserved for the 70s it looked so beautiful it was more than beautiful in my eyes it was delightful it was unconventional it was radical in its own right I was fascinated in how she got it like that I loved how that was her staple look so like Nicki Minaj had her pink bob Beyonce had her golden brown waves 
and SZA had her fro. Either it was real or not. At the time, I did not give a fuck, but over time, I did speculate, honey. But at this time, I did not give a fuck if her hair was real or not. It definitely sent exactly the right message to me as a young black girl in the inner cities of D.C. Then, the freckles. Let's get into the freckles. I thought her freckles were a fucking vibe, not gonna lie though. Before I saw her freckles, I thought freckles were not a black person thing and assumed it looked unpleasant on black folks, you know? But SZA broke all those remaining self and societal harbored stereotypes about my race. I wanted to go to the thrift store and buy all the graphic t-shirts, oversized t-shirts a girl ever could. Like, the most graphic, the better. I needed at least one pair of overalls, denim, no question. I found out that they were pretty expensive, but fuck it. I ended up getting me at least one pair. Check. I studied her style. I listened to her music. Every song I possibly could find at the time, which wasn't many. I remember finding her old ass mixtapes that probably are wiped from the internet for the most part by now. But I just found out they are on SoundCloud, so y'all can go check all her old ass songs on SoundCloud. Now, if you're an OG Caesar fan, you know the vibes. You know exactly the songs I'm talking about and the albums. C Scissor Run and S were the albums that she had out at the time. And I just began to delve into the intricacies of her sound. The tapestry of experimental sound will always be underrated, especially when it comes to SZA, y'all. Like, especially her sound at the time was just so, like, ethereal, fluffy, like, it was different. And I also heard that the reason why she doesn't have these songs out now is because she was using beats by producers and she wasn't paying for it. So she didn't get them cleared. So that's basically the reason why, you know, but it's, you know, it's whatever. We all did that shit back in the day. But anybody remember Terra Dome and Pray? Welcome to my Terra Dome. Dome. Uh, welcome to my Terra Dome. Dome. Y'all, like, I used to bop to it. I'm telling you, SZA really revolutionized for me music and, like, Afrocentricness and just everything, like, She showed me, like, you don't have to be a black girl with some skinny jeans or some pink nail polish. You can be a little unconventional. And I received that. I received that at 15 years old. Um, It definitely takes me back to when I was 15 waiting for more music from this unicorn of a fucking woman, right? Her music was just beautiful. She woke up the essence inside of me. I wasn't fitting in at school at the time with the latest trends because my mom simply couldn't afford it at the time. So to see a black female artist showing me that it's okay to be different and stand out and not spend so much time on paying all this money for style, I had eventually got lost in her music and gained all of the confidence I needed to be inspired heavily by SZA's early look. And heavily inspired I was. Her being from Missouri and me being from the inner city of D.C., I found a way to connect to nature through her music and maintain a carefree attitude in my free time. So then it came, the YouTube searches. How to do hair like SZA, SZA hair tutorial, how to make fake freckles, fake freckles tutorial. Oh yeah, it was starting. It was real. I was so balls deep into the aesthetic that I wanted people to react to me the way I reacted to SZA in my head. I don't know if that made sense, but I wanted to be like SZA. I wanted to achieve that whole look. I was what I was only 15 at the time and needed something to be inspired by besides Nicki Minaj who I definitely enjoyed the music of and was inspired by don't get me wrong but Nicki's over sexualized persona wasn't something I wanted to jump into because I knew you know it wasn't age appropriate for me so it wasn't pulling me like Nicki Minaj's aesthetic wasn't pulling me at the time some girls wanted to be Nicki Minaj for Halloween that wasn't me like I didn't want to jump into that the other indulgence of pink and tight clothes just wasn't for me again it was just I wanted to express myself differently, but I didn't want to be like that. So that's just me, right? Especially with a girl that did not have no curves. You know, I wasn't really popping like a lot of girls with my puberty. So through the discovery of SZA in 2013, I became comfortable with comfortability. I became confident in that hippie, baggy, pattern type style. I was walking out of the house with crochet braids that weighed about the same amount as my fucking kitten. It was big. And yes, I walked out of the house with dots on my face at least seven, because she showed me another type of beauty that I had not fathomed at this time. Like, I had just grasped, like, this is a form of beauty, and I I resonate with this. I couldn't grasp a beautiful, dark-skinned Black woman who was natural, 
presenting as fuck in every way and dark skin like me while emitting this light of friendliness like it was just so much that I just resonated with she was a black and golden unicorn in my eyes as rare as they get I knew I wouldn't get another artist like this like where people was eating the look up in my life too like when I wore my hair big or I wore overalls people would ask me where you get it like that is a beautiful style like is that your hair Girls at my school, by that time I got to high school, when I was still getting to that look, girls were inspired by me. I became the trendsetter baby, and I wasn't looking like a lot of girls that were popular at my school. I accessorized and added my own flair to it, obviously. Got little stuff from Hot Topics, added little quirky little accessories that I thought was cute. And people was fucking with it, so I was like, damn, this is lit. It was the attention I received as well. It was the looks I got. People looking at me like, what the fuck? Even the looks that weren't so, like, flattering, I just felt like, wow, they're actually looking at me like I'm a unicorn. People were beginning to be as fascinated with me as much as I was fascinated with SZA. It was working, so I kept it going. And now I am now older, I've grown, I've gotten a more individualized style. I'm not sitting here like trying to be like Susan now, I'm 25. Obviously, I have grown up, I have became more comfortable, I've gained self-esteem and I've added different things to my style, right? But that's just to set the baseline of how much SZA has inspired me as a young woman, not just through music, but also through presentation-wise, right? So now, obviously, SZA does not look the way she did in 2013, and I'm sad. Not because I'm anti-cosmetic surgery or anything like that, but because that was the SZA that made me feel comfortable to be different in so many ways. Watching SZA run in her early stages of her career empowered me as a young woman. I would have never thought she was slowly involved to who she is today and how she looks today. Her presentation was bold. Now, looking back, I didn't pick at her weight, but she'll say she wore the baggy clothes because of her weight, because she was big. She didn't feel comfortable with her weight. In fact, so you was medium sized. I'm just trying to imagine you medium sized sitting on the never toilet diary. I was larger than I am now. <laughs> so the weight gain had to be harder because you had a gymnast, so you was always thin. I, well, I was muscular. I was buff. Right. I'm, I was very like I was very heavy. Even as a gymnast, I'm and I ran track, so I have like very. Say, hey, <laughs> what'd you win? 100, 200. Mm-hmm. Me too. I um <laughs> I have very like dense quads and a lot of like muscle memory. So that packed on with like eating <laughs> and everything else was just like very heavy and very difficult to get off cuz okay, me I was always a thin girl so I guess that wasn't something I really like was like, "Oh, okay." But then the freckles started disappearing, y'all. Y'all notice that? Her freckles started disappearing. <laughs> oh my goodness. That was kind of confusing. I had to start Googling the shit. And now that I'm going into it with the freckles being fake. I have a lot more freckles. For a while, like, I covered them. Because I wasn't born with them. Like, they developed through, like, high school. And then I didn't, I was already being teased for other shit. And I didn't want another reason for them to tease me. So I would just, like, cover them up. Now, it is what it is. Fuck it. Okay. Because I didn't think they were fake in 2013, but I'm assuming by like 20, 20, like 16, 17, I started questioning it. And there's this doctor who posted a um a short about SZA. SZA, new face plastic surgery analysis. I watched this dude. He's pretty cool. Dr. Gary. And he talks about celebrity cosmetic surgery. So when he posted about SZA, you know, I was quick to click. Whenever I see that shit, because I didn't know, like, I didn't know the terminologies. I didn't know, like, what would she have gotten done? I know she looks different, but I don't know what she got done. But I know that she does look different. Her face obviously looks different, right? And the reason why I question the freckles is because, again, I was inspired by SZA, right? So, of course, I would put the freckles in certain places where she had hers. But those exact places that they were being placed, they weren't there no more. And they started disappearing. That was my thing. I was like, damn, girl, I'm trying... But now I see the shit disappearing. I was confused. That's all. I was confused. But of course, I still tuned in. You know, there's people who said that SZA went hard about her her freckles. She said they were real. So I had a, I had a reason to believe her. But because they were disappearing, it was kind of like they weren't at it wasn't adding up. So it's been confirmed. She was lying. Gary even said it. My dude Gary says she was lying. The only real freckle she got is above her lip. All the other ones are fake. I'm not trying to get into the pathological liar thing here, but that's for another video. But I was confused, but of course I still tuned in. I remember looking at 2013 and 2016 photos and noticing slight differences in her face. But I didn't see too many videos covering it, so I kind of just, you know, didn't really invest too much into it. But my conclusion, it was the weight. It had to have been, right? At that time, I thought. 
SZA lost weight. That's why she looks different. When you lose weight, sometimes it shows in your face. People were just throwing this out there. It's the weight. It's the weight. It's the weight. And I'm like, <sighs> okay, I guess it's the weight then. So with that, I just kept dancing to the music. Y'all don't want to hear me. Y'all just want to dance. So I danced. Okay. So then obviously the transformation was done over time with slight changes tweaked just enough to not look completely night and day. But come on now, SZA. Come on now. Like, come on. We, we see it. We see it. Don't gaslight us. Either don't say nothing about it at all, don't speak on it and just let people talk or come out and be honest, you know? Like, I know celebrities don't really like talking about plastic surgery like that, depending, but people are going to notice the difference. We're not dummies. You get what I'm saying? We're not dummies. It don't take a plastic surgeon to look at your face and be like, okay, girl, there's something different here and it's not the weight. So I just felt like her coming out and going against it, like, no, I think it's Going into the pathological thing, girl. You're going into the liar thing. You're already known to be a liar about a lot of shit with the solids and the fiance and the marine biology. Just all the lies, right? We're not talking about that, though. But she comes out and says, it hurts my feelings and all these things, right? But come on now, SZA. SZA is this now softened, pointier, slimmer version of herself, right? Her chin is pointy as fuck. The fluff in her cheeks is deflated. I think I heard she got buckle fat, which is the worst fucking cosmetic surgery for any woman to get. We should not be getting buckle fat removal, y'all. Buccal buckle. Her cheeks are not fluffed. The freckles were completely gone, vanished. The body, however, was now being shown off and it was snatched. Period, right? Period. I never really saw SZA as fat or overweight, to be honest. And then when she did gain weight, I honestly thought she was fucking beautiful. But when she showed off her body, you could definitely tell her body is fucking snatched. A year or so ago, SZA was noticeably gaining weight for her fat transfer, which eventually turned into her BBL. And I thought, again, she looked fucking amazing. It looked amazing on her before the BBL and afterwards when she gained weight without it, whatever. I thought she looked beautiful. I never seen her body when she wore the overalls. So, you know, it was kind of like, OK. And then I seen her lose a lot of weight. She looked really skinny at one point. I was like, wow, she looks more like me with the slimness because I'm a very slim young lady. I'm just now gaining my way in my 20s, but I was always slim. I was always just a very slim young girl growing up, you know, and I wanted to have a little meat on my bones. But to be honest, I have nothing to say about her BBL or body. Never did. We fluctuate as women with our weight and people go on guess, whatever. And she's open and honest about her body as far as her BBL. So again, I have nothing to say there. Like, that's fine. Like, again, she looks beautiful. I'm only referring to our actual face in this video. So, in conclusion, SZA has reached her final form and we should just shut the fuck up about it because it hurts her feelings to talk about her alterations to her face. Apparently that's how she feels because she put a little interview out where she said that. The impersonable teenage me thought she looked beautiful the way she was because in her authentic state, she showed me how beautiful I was in my authentic state. Now that she's altered her face, it puts me in a weird place where I'm watching the catalyst in my life change into an entire different substance. But I'm wishing SZA a happy, satisfying life, y'all. Like, I love SZA and her music, even though I do be hearing she be um backmasking, y'all. But I don't know. But I still enjoy her music, and I am a day one fan. A part of me is sad, y'all. That is it. Like, a part of me is sad to see the before and afters when I go up and down my timeline or up and down my YouTube and people are pointing it out. As I question who told her she needed to make those motherfucking alterations to begin with. Like, who told her to get those alterations? Like, I want to know who. I don't even want to know why no more. Fuck why, because this is Hollywood. But who told her, oh, you need to do this to your nose. Oh, you need to do this to your chin. Oh, you need to take this. You need to pull this back. Ponytail this. Who? Y'all doctors wanting fucking money? I heard SZA spent over $500,000 on her plastic surgery. Like, come on now. Y'all just want fucking money. I blame Hollywood. With that being said, this industry can really alter someone by being just a part of it for a certain period of time. Just observing the shit that goes down is going to fuck you up. I'm gonna be honest with you. The shit that I heard, you don't even have to be partaking to see the shit that happens and be affected by it and be around that energy. That's pretty much it, y'all. That's my rant. That's my ramble about Miss SZA. Are you a day one fan of SZA? Do you really like rock with her like, like that? And to all the day ones, what are your favorite songs from C Scissor Run and or S?
Mine is Pteridome and Prey. How do you feel about SZA's final form? Like, Super Saiyan, like, this is her final form. Like, ain't no going back. Do you feel like Hollywood pressed her into altering her looks and particularly her face? Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. Let me know what you think. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Y'all have a good weekend and yeah, peace.